Today is Wednesday, August the 8th, 2018. The location is the Yankee Air Museum in Belleville, Michigan. The time is 1 p.m. and the person being interviewed is Rita Dodd. Rita served in the United States Navy during World War II. The interview will be conducted by Dan Mihal. Also present at this interview are her son-in-law, John Crossley, and her daughter, Ruth Dodd. Also present is the videographer, Gary Delisle. This interview is being conducted on behalf of the Oral History Project at the Yankee Air Museum in Belleville, Michigan. To start with, Rita, how are you today? How are you today? Right. Okay. And can you tell me when you were born? October 11, 1920. And where were you born? Where? Where were you born? Where? Where? I was born in Clarkston, Michigan. And what were your parents' names? My parents were Frank Holsey and Gladys Wilbur. And were your parents born in this country? Uh, yes, they were. Where was your father born? Uh, my father was probably born in, down in Troy. And where was your mother born? My brother was born in California. And how many brothers and sisters did you have? I had four, two brothers and two sisters. And what were their names? Uh, my older sister was Ethel Halsey. And the next one was Alice Halsey. My brothers were Samuel Payson Halsey and Donald Halsey. What was the nickname for Sam? What did they call him? What was Sam's nickname? Just say it a little louder, please. What was Sam's nickname? Sam? Yeah. His, we always called him Pace. Okay. And did you grow up in Clarkston? I grew up on a farm about five miles out of Clarkston. Clarkston must have been a very small town back then. At that time it was. And did you attend school in Clarkston? Yes, I graduated from Clarkston High School in 1937. That's, that's a year early, right? Then you would have been only 17 when you graduated? Uh, yes, I was. I was always the youngest because I, we didn't have kindergarten then. And I learned, since I was the youngest, I learned to read before I went to school. Wow. And so I just spent a couple of months in first grade and went right on to second. After you graduate, graduated from high school, did you attend school? Did you go to a college? Yes. Uh, there was a per, uh, Michigan State Normal at the time had a program where you could go for two years and you could teach in a rural one-room school. So I took that course, went two years to Michigan Normal, and taught for four years in a one-room school. What was Michigan Normal, what is Michigan Normal called today? <laughs> Eastern Michigan University. And so you taught for, for four years. Where did you teach? Where, Where did you teach? <clears throat> I taught in uh, Rose Center and uh, the Thompson School, which was, uh, well, when I left, they combined it with the Milford School District. Okay, so that wasn't close to Clarkston then, was it? What? It wasn't close to Clarkston? No, it wasn't. Do you remember where you were and what you were doing when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yes, I do. I was reading and 
uh, my brother, Payson, came in and said that they had bombed Pearl Harbor. By that time, my younger brother had been drafted. Okay. <clears throat> um. He was drafted in the first draft. Now, you told me that you were surprised by how many Americans thought that the war started in 1941. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, the war started when Hitler invaded Poland in 1939. And Canada had been at war normally as part of the British Empire for four years. And a lot of Americans went to Canada and joined Canadian forces. Okay. Now you said your 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 younger brother Donald was drafted. Where did where did he go initially after he was drafted? Uh, he went to Louisiana for his training, uh, and then he uh, went to uh, the west the East Coast. Uh, he was at a camp in the East Coast. And when Pearl Harbor came up, he was immediately shipped, shipped to the South Pacific, and he spent four, seri four years in the South Pacific. Where was he in the South Pacific, specifically? Uh, New Guinea. Uh, and the island hopped all the way through. He came home early because he, they had a point system and he had enough points so that he came home early. What was his job when he was in the South he Pacific? He was a stretcher bearer. That was probably not a lot of fun. Was, it? was your other brother drafted, Samuel? No, he did not go. So what caused you to volunteer for the Navy? Well, uh, there were no young people left around where I was uh, teaching. I, I was about the only one anywhere around. And there were a lot of posters out, you know, join the Navy and so forth of all the services, in fact. And so I decided that I would do that. So those posters had an effect on you? The posters had an effect on you? Well, yes. So why did you choose the Navy to join up? <laughs> You'll never uh, realize it, but I had a weight problem. The Army would not take anyone who weighed less than a hundred. The Navy, it was 95, and I weighed 97. That was one reason. Okay. They had prettier uniforms, too. <laughs> <laughs> So after you enlisted, or well, where did you enlist? I went, I was sent to New York to Hunter College for a boot camp. Okay. And then we went to Atlanta for training in the Link Trainers. Okay. And when we were done there, we had leave and I came home and then I was shipped to uh, Beeville, Texas. Okay. County C to B County. Beeville, Texas. Um, did you have an interest in airplanes or aviation before you were assigned to Link Trainers? What? Did you have an interest in aviation or airplanes before you went into the Navy and got assigned to Links? Oh, I had 
everybody had an interest in aviation back in those days. Now, when you were, um, when you first went in the Navy, you had a problem with your foot? <laughs> yes, I did. I, my foot started to swell when I was in Hunter College. I went to the doctor and they bound it very securely with tape. Well, we had a doctor on the train going to Atlanta and I asked him to take the thing off, the tape off, and he said, well, he couldn't do that because he didn't have any more to put on. Well, I didn't want him to put any more on. I just wanted it taken off. When I got to Atlanta, first thing we had to do was check in the sick bay. He took one look at my foot, cut that off, and put my foot in the coldest water I have ever <laughs> felt in my life. And did the job, took this, and then I was in bed for three days. Okay. Now, after you finished training in Atlanta and before you came home on leave, did the Navy ask you where you wanted to be stationed after? <laughs> the Navy moved people where they needed warm bodies. So, um, when you got leave, you came home to Detroit, is that correct? Yes, I came back home. So then you left Detroit after your leave to go to Beeville, Texas, is that right? Right. And how did you, how did you get to Beeville, Texas from Detroit? By train. And this was still 1943? Yes. So um, where, where is Beeville, Texas? What? Where is Beeville, Texas? Beeville? Yeah. Uh, it's between uh, Corpus Christi and San Antonio, nearer to Corpus Christi. Uh, the air base at Corpus Christi had six different fields, and each one was had a specialty. Ours was the late trainer. We were, did the instrument flight, and there were others. They went then to another field and did another thing and so on. Did you have to take some of the same classes as the cadets? What? Did you have to take some of the same classes, training as the cadets? Oh, yes. We had to take classes. <laughs> We had to take nav navigation, and I remember there was a part in navigation where there was a fictitious ship, and I never could quite figure out why that fictitious ship was there and what it was doing, but it was. <laughs> we took that, we took aerology. Uh, we took weather, we took a lot of classes. Okay. Now, the, at the time, the link trainer was relatively new, wasn't it, for training? It was, right. Relatively new? The link? Yes, it yes. was. It was the first instrument flight uh, trainer that there was. It was the only way that they trained pilots for instrument flight during World War II. Now in the trainer, the pilot had to get into something that was like a little toy airplane, is that correct? Well, it was, uh, <laughs> it was invented by Edmund Link and he was an organ maker. So it was on bellows and it didn't fly anything like a airplane at all. But the bellows would move it around? Yes. 
So the pilot, the cadet sort of thought, it felt like he was flying? <laughs> pilot hated him. Now you mentioned Beeville. It it's a, sounds like a very small town. It was. They had one stoplight at the time. Now you also told me that he had an interesting sheriff at Beeville. What? Sheriff at Beeville. <laughs> The sheriff of Beeville looked like a Texas sheriff should. <laughs> so he was tall and thin tall, and, and, and well he had armed, a, a well me. armed. Now, did you grade the cadets when you were training them? Did you grade the cadets? What? Grade the cadets? Did you assign grades to the cadets? Yes. Uh, we had to either pass them or not. Okay. So you had the authority to wash cadets out? Uh, we had the authority to wash them out. Did you ever feel that the cadets resented that a woman was training them? Uh, no. I never had that. Okay. So we replaced sailors and some sailors prevented being replaced. Okay, the, the ones that the trainers... They didn't want to go out to the fleet after all. Did you have a quota of the number of people you had to pass or fail? No. Okay. <laughs> it depended. I, I said it was wherever they needed warm bodies. So if, if they, they needed a lot of pilots in the fleet, we put them through fast. Okay. So how long did a cadet stay in link training? Uh, as I said, that depends. If they had, if they needed them in the fleet. Okay. They went through pretty fast. If they didn't. It was a little bit longer. I imagine in 1943 they needed a lot of pilots. That's right. So ru roughly a cadet would be in for about six weeks. Is that sort of a normal length of time? Six weeks was about normal length of time for a cadet? Uh, about that. So you would get a whole new set of cadets about every six weeks. Right. Now, did you um, did you just have one one training session per day, or did you? No, have we had three. Wow. Three cadets came in. Two of them sat on a bench and did their homework or watched us, and one was in the trainer for a period of about 45 minutes. And then when he got out, the next one went in. So was there, were you the only person on a link, on one link trainer per day? Or did you have somebody else come in, another trainer? Uh, we had a whole building full of link trainers. And we were assigned a certain one every day. Okay. Now we had we worked in two shifts. We had a morning shift and an afternoon shift. Okay. Now you met your husband in the link trainer. Yes. He blew a fuse in my trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Literally. They just started to spin around. <laughs> <laughs> what year did you meet your husband? Was that, what, what year? What? What year did you meet your husband? Uh, 19, hmm, 40, at the end of 43, the beginning of 44. How long were you? 61 years. Wow. Wow. Was there an issue because 
your husband was an officer and you were an enlisted person on the base? Uh, once in a while. I remember uh, I was transferred. Finally, he was stationed in Atlanta at the time, and I was stationed in Corpus Christi. We came home on our honeymoon. Okay. And after that, I had to go back to Corpus Christi. I applied for a transfer and was transferred to Atlanta about six weeks later. Uh, what, where, what was your husband's hometown? What? What was your husband's hometown? Uh, he was from Yonkers, New York. And, and what, did, what was your final rank in the Navy? What was his final what rank? What was your final rank? Hmm? Your final rank? My final grade. I was a, uh, a specialist T. Uh, I was a specialist T. Uh, two bars. Okay. I have one over there. But it only has one bar on it, and the reason for that is that the one I had that had two bars on it was moth-eaten. Oh, okay. What was your husband's final rank? Your what? husband's final rank? My husband's final rank? Yes. He was a commander. Okay. What year were you married? 1940. Five. Okay. And where did your husband go after he finished training at your base? <laughs> uh, he went, I've forgotten which field he went to, but he went for further training and uh, graduated. I've forgotten what year. Okay. What did he do after he finished all his training? The Navy was kind to me. They sent him right back to my squadron as a flight instructor. Do you think that they sent him back there because he was married? We weren't married then. Okay. Now I saw a certificate um, awarding your husband a rank of ensign in the Naval Reserve. Was that certificate because he was a trainer then? That he was an instructor? He hated being an instructor. Everybody, you know, back in those days, the young men graduated, they wanted to go right out in the fleet and kill all those Japs and everything. And he very much hated being just an instructor. Did you stay in Texas from 1943 until the end of the war? No. I moved to Atlanta, and I was stationed in Atlanta at the time the war ended. Okay. Now, after the war was over, did the Navy ask you to stay on? No. We signed up for the duration at six. And they were very glad to get rid of us ladies. They didn't have anything for us to do. There was no more link training, or did they put the men no. back? OK. When were you mustered out? of the Navy? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was mustered out in October of 1945. Uh, and we were sent to the nearest base that there was to where we 
enlisted. I enlisted in Detroit, so I was sent to Great Lakes to be mustered out. So the Navy sent you to Great Lakes? Yes. How did they transport you? By train. By train. Now, did you have to um, get transportation from Great Lakes back to Detroit yourself? Uh, no, they sent us by train. Okay. So they gave you a ticket to back to Detroit? So Great Lakes is in Chicago, is that correct? That's right. Did your husband stay in the Navy after the war? Yes, he did. He stayed in the Navy. Uh, one weekend a month, two weeks a year. The Ready Reserve for until he retired. Do you remember what year he retired? Mm. No. Uh, it was about in the 60s uh, because we went to Germany at that time. Okay. Where was your husband stationed when he was in the reserves? Uh, he was stationed at uh, Gross Hill. Oh, okay. He was out of, worked out of Gross Hill. Gross Hill was a very, it was a going concern then. It was a big Navy base during the war. Do you remember what kind of plane your husband flew? Hmm. A V four or six, I don't remember. Okay. It was a regular training plane. So he was still a pilot in the reserves, right? Yes. Was he a pilot until he retired? What? Was he a pilot until he retired? Was he a pilot until he retired? Oh, uh, yes. And he kept his pilot's license up until... <laughs> he was, they had a pilot's club over in Muskegon and they all got old and couldn't fly anymore, so they <laughs> sold the plane. Where did you live after the war? Where did you live? Where did I live? Yes, after the war. After the war? At, you, when you were married to your husband, where did you live? Uh, we uh, had a terrible time finding housing in Atlanta. And we finally found a nice little one room place sort of that we lived for a while. When you lived in Michigan, where where did you live? What town? Uh, we had our oldest daughter and she and I lived with my parents until he could get a place for us to live in Willow Village. And we lived in Willow Village for four or five years. Is that, is that Willow Run? Is Willow yes. Village Willow Run? Willow Run. It was called Willow Village. It was put up for uh, temporary housing for the Southerners who came up to work in the plants here. And after the war, it was used for government housing for uh, veterans who were going to school. Okay. So after the war, you went back to school? Yes. My husband and I both went to school under the GI Bill. Okay. Where did you go to school? What school? I went to EMU and finished up. Uh, he went to Michigan. Okay. 
So you got your bachelor's degree at Eastern? Oh, yes, and I later got my master's degree there. After you got your degree, where did you teach? Uh, I taught down in the village of Wayne for about a year and a half, and then we eventually moved to Farmington, and I retired from the Farmington school system. Really, I live in Farmington. Where, where, whereabouts did you live in Farmington? Uh, we lived on the 11 Mile Road. Okay. Did you, did you teach elementary school in yes, Farmington? Yes, I did. What grade did you mostly teach? Mostly, I taught fourth grade. When were your daughters born? When were your daughters born? Uh, Mary was born in... Right after the war? Uh, no, she was born in 40... Six, 47, I don't know. How about Ruth? Ruth, when were you born? 1948. And what were your other daughters' names? Rita and Melissa. Are all your daughters still living in this area? Uh, no, three of them are. You well, know, one is living in South Carolina right now, but she has a home up near Rochester. The other ones, I, uh, the other one, my youngest daughter is living in the state of Washington. What did your husband do after the war? He was an engineer. <laughs> it's funny. I, he was the only engineer I know who worked on engines, really. Who did he work for? Uh, he worked for uh, Teledyne. They worked on tank engines. Okay. And was where where did where was that where was he doing that work? Was that here? Was that local? Uh, it was. Uh, he worked over at the uh, Warren. The, right. the tank plant in Warren. At the tank plant. Uh, and then. We were moved to Muskegon, so we lived in Muskegon for 11 years. Okay. I, I taught in a medium security state prison too <laughs> <laughs> while I was there. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now you said you taught at Farmington. How long did you teach at Farmington? What? How long did you teach at Farmington? Uh, I taught in Farmington so that when they gave us credit for our war years, I was able to retire when we moved to Muskegon. And oh. I, I don't know how long it was about. I've been retired longer than I taught. Okay. Did your husband worked for Teledyne the whole time after he grew uh, Yes, he did, except in one time he got laid off and he worked for Burroughs in Plymouth for a while. But he went back to Teledyne after that? Yes. And where did they send him? Well, they sent us to Germany for one year. Mm -hmm. They also, he, he also had to do some traveling for Teledyne, like to the Upper Peninsula, and... Oh, yes. <laughs> he went to the Upper Peninsula in the winter, Yuma, Arizona in the summer. So you said you've been retired for quite a while. That was, you, you retired in what year, 19... Uh, I retired when we moved to Muskegon. I, I don't know, it was a long time ago. It was in the 70s? Mm, 
make me. Okay. Was your husband the same age as you are? No. He was two and a half years younger than I am. So when did he join the Navy? Where did he join when, the Navy? When did he join the Navy? He joined the Navy back in New York. Okay. Well, as you look back on your life and all your experiences, do you have anything that you would like to say to uh, people growing up today, children growing up today? Uh, normally the answer to that question would be to tell them that, to go into the service. I wouldn't tell people that now. Why is that? Well, for one thing, I don't approve of where they're being sent. Okay. And for another, uh, they're not properly trained and not given the proper equipment. Well, Ruth, uh, I don't have any more questions. Thank you for your time. It's been enjoyable talking to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay.